This is going to be Job chapter 1. And I'm going to talk about there was a real man in the land of Uz. Job 1.1, 1, 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. So there was a man. This wasn't just any ordinary man. And there was actually a man. This isn't just some type of parable. And this wasn't the average deadbeat you walk by in Walmart. This was some real man. A manly man's man. This was not some gender queer, gender neutral, non-binary, dazed and confused thing that you see on TV today. Uh, he is what you would call a champion of the faith. In Ezekiel 14.20, Job is in a list of three men that defeated the world, the flesh, and the devil. In Ezekiel 14.14, 14, 14, it says these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. They should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. It says, Noah, Daniel, and Job. Isn't that something? When, when the Lord wants to mention three righteous men, Job is one of them. When God speaks of righteousness, he lists these three men. And Noah overcame the world. Daniel overcame the flesh. And you're going to see that Job overcomes the devil. So there was a man. This was a manly man's man. This was a man in the land of us. Not to be, to be confused with the land of Oz. But God describes Job. He describes this man. And he says that he's perfect. And this doesn't mean sinless perfection, obviously. One of the greatest verses in the Bible that proves that this doesn't mean sinless perfection when it says perfect is in 1 Kings fifteen fourteen. It says, But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. So Asa wasn't sinlessly perfect because he didn't have the high places removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. So Asa, he had a perfect heart. He wasn't sinless. Job is perfect, but he's not sinless. Many men are like that. You may know of a pastor or just a good Christian who had a great besetting sin in their life. Yet you can still see God's favor on them because their heart is perfect before the Lord. You know, sometimes when people sin, they got their whole heart into it. And then other times, when they got a besetting sin, they're sinning because they're struggling with that sin, but their heart's not into that. But Job, he was perfect. Number two, Job was upright. Job is described as upright by the Lord himself. What an honor that would be. You know how it can be a very exciting thing when someone you look up to gives you a compliment? Imagine the God of the universe calling you upright. In Proverbs twenty nine twenty seven, it says, An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. So Job is an upright man. He would be an abomination to the wicked. He would be pleasant to the eyes of the Lord. However, if he's an abomination to the wicked, the devil is the wicked one, and he would have hated Job with a passion. He wouldn't even have wanted the Lord to bring Job up in a conversation. Number three, Job fears God. In Psalm 111, 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Job had wisdom before there was such a thing as the wisdom of Solomon. Job had wisdom before Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon was written. Job was around during the days of around Jacob and Esau. I mean, he was way before Solomon. Uh, the, the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It, it was written before Genesis because Job came before Moses. And Moses is the one that wrote the book of Genesis. Job is a wise man. And number four, he eschews evil. This means he turned away from evil. 
And look how Peter used the word in 1 Peter 3.11. It says, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So it says, let him eschew evil and do good. Now cross-reference that verse and find Psalm 34.14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. See how it's similar? 1 Peter 3.11, let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Psalm 34, 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So the Bible interprets itself. Job eschewed evil. So he departed from it. He turned away from it and did good. So Job 1, 1 and 1, 2. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. So he had seven sons and three daughters. Psalm 127, 4 and 5 says, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Job was a man who was fruitful and multiplied. And since he lived back around in 1800 B.C. or so, around the times of Jacob and Esau, he probably lived to be somewhere between 100 to 200 years old. I mean, he had plenty of time to have many children. And notice the, that the context points out that having many children is an honor and a blessing. It describes it as something good. It doesn't put it in a negative light as people do today. It's describing how good Job is and it's telling you that he has a lot of children. Having children is a good thing. Job 1.3 says his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. So 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses and a very great household. Job was living during a time when God's focus was on a physical kingdom of heaven and not on a spiritual kingdom of God. So Job was getting physical blessings. Today, the main focus is on spiritual blessings. You know how the New Testament says he's given us spiritual blessings. Even though most of us today are very blessed physically as well, today God's focused on the spiritual things and this is because today the spiritual kingdom of god is in oper operation you see you entered the kingdom of god when you got born again we're not focusing on a physical kingdom of heaven but job that's when he was living when god was concerned with the physical kingdom of heaven job's wealth is being shown through his animals today it's shown through your vehicles Today, the rich people have big car collections, and each one costs more than your house costs. And I've seen LeBron James, people like that, with million-dollar vehicles. And people judge you based on how many vehicles do you have. Well, back then, it was how many animals do you have. In Job 1.4, it says, And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. The sons and daughters of Job were getting together. This doesn't mean it's a wicked feast or anything like that. I mean, the sisters were invited over. So this shows you it's not just some party where they've got hookers and everything else. It says they feasted in their houses, everyone his day. Maybe it is a birthday celebration, something like that. And even though no sin is going on, sometimes in prosperity as Job's family would be in, you can lose focus and, be and begin to focus on feasting instead of on fasting. You can begin to focus on playing instead of praying or relaxing instead of reading. And Job 1.5, it says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So this shows you the man. There was a real man in the land of us, a man named Job, and he worshipped God even during this time of prosperity. 
It can be hard to worship God in such prosperity. And it can be harder for some to worship during times of trouble, depending on who you are. Maybe you have been in both situations. Maybe you've been in a time of prosperity and you still worship God. Maybe you've been in a time of hard times where you had nothing and you still worship God. I believe that you need to worship God in both cases. And I believe Job worships God in both cases and passes the test in both circumstances. When you are in a situation like Job, it can become easy to stray from the Lord because you begin to start trusting in your own ability and in your own riches. Just like David said in Psalm 30 and verse 6, he said, And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Sometimes when you're in prosperity, you got all the food you need, you got all the vehicles you need, work's going good, marriage is going good, the children are doing good in school, they're not getting in trouble. You think, life's going to be like this forever. Nothing can get me down. And you say, in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. But all it would take is for God to move his hand away and the serpent would get you. So even in prosperity, stay close to the Lord. And it says in Job 1, 5, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my, sins, that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So Job is rising early in the morning. He isn't staying up all night drinking and partying and binge watching TV shows and playing NBA 2K and eating Cheetos in a bean bag. He's up with the chickens. He's up before the old men are up eating breakfast at Bojangles and Hardee's and Carl's Jr. or whatever they eat at in your town. He's up and he's offering burnt offerings. He is sanctifying his children. And that word means set apart. He's up giving a burnt offering for his children because maybe they've cursed God in their heart. He's not seen them sin outwardly, but for all he knows, they've cursed God in their heart. Job is doing this as the priest of his family. And notice that's a difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. The only priest I have today is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my high priest. He's the one who sanctifies me. But at the same time, we can pray for our kids every morning. Job 1.5 says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually so it doesn't say the children were doing anything wrong but it may be that they've sinned or cursed god in their hearts job's not stupid he knows his kids aren't perfect a lot of parents think their kids are perfect and that they don't do anything wrong but job's a wise man job is a responsible man you would have to be you would have to be wise when you've got 10 kids a wife and you know, that many animals and that much responsibility, you know, and, you know, that many servants that he's got. A lot of parents can learn from Job. I mean, it's, it's time that parents grow up. It's time to be the one who's responsible. Job is the one showing that he's responsible. I know a good number of parents that are more immature and irresponsible than their kids are. I mean, that's not right. It's time that you step your parenting game up. It's time you just... Step up and be an adult. I mean, Job rose early in the morning and offered burnt offerings for his children. He acknowledges that they could have cursed God in their heart. He realized that it wasn't only about the outward appearance of things. Job knew the heart is deceitfully wicked. And in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says the heart is deceitful and above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I also want you to notice at the end of Job 1.5 that it says, Thus did Job continually. He would rise early in the morning, offer these burnt offerings for his children continually. This wasn't just a one-time thing. A lot of times people will turn over a new leaf. 
and they do good a few times or a few days in a row and then they're back in the gutter where they started well that wasn't job he was consistent he consistently offered burnt offerings he consistently got up early in the morning he consistently thought about his children i mean sometimes deadbeat dads feel like a they want to be a dad one day then the next day they don't but if you're a real man like job You'll do it even when you don't feel like it. You will do it continually. So Job 1, five, And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So there was a real man in the land of us.